Hello, everyone. My name is Wayne Morris, a lieutenant with the ECSU Police Department, and I'll speak with you today in regards to Cleary compliance. We're going to talk about the Cleary Act, which is uh, the Campus Security Authority training for ECSU. What is the Cleary Act? The Cleary Act is a statute that was enacted after a Lehigh student named Jean Cleary was raped and murdered in her dorm room. As a result, the Cleary Act was passed and helped students and parents make informed decisions in when selecting a college or university. The purpose of the Cleary Act is to provide the campus community with timely, accurate, and complete information about crime and the safety of campus so they can make informed decisions to keep themselves safe. Here we're talking about non-compliance, which impacts the university and per violation is $55,970 per violation. The other consequences are negatively impacting the university's reputation, punitive personnel actions, negatively impacting enrollment. Crime statistics, we gather the crime statistics through our annual security and fire safety reports. Here are a few ways that we do that. Uh, we report the crime, the security crimes, when they're notified to the university or local law enforcement. Local law enforcement are required to send a letter requesting statistics from all agencies surrounding the university and will also collect the statistics from the university police. Here we're going to discuss why do we identify campus security authorities. The Clery Act requires that institution to identify individuals and organizations that meet the definitions of security, campus security authorities. Under Cleary, the crime is deemed reported when it is brought to the attention of a CSA or university or local law enforcement agency by a witness, offender, victim, or third party, including a non-student. A CSA's primary responsibility is to report the allegation made in good faith to a reporting structure established by the institution. Good faith here is defined as a reasonable basis for believing that the information is not simply rumor or hearsay. The significant responsibility for students and campus activities. Remember, it's about the function, not the job title. Because officials respons official responsibility and job titles vary significantly. CSAs are officials whose function involve building relationships with students. If someone has a significant responsibility for students and campus activities, he or she is a campus security authority. Who are campus security authorities? Here are examples. University police, security staff, local police departments, Title IX and their investigators, director of athletics, athletic coaches, student affairs personnel, officials designated to receive and report reported crimes, who are not. Clerical staff, cafeteria staff, faculty staff, and in county. Here are examples of CSA exemptions, pastoral counselors, licensed professional counselors, you have a special note here. Each personnel must be working within the scope of their license or religious duties when receiving a crime report. What type of crimes must the CSA report? Here are examples that are listed on this slide. Murder, non-negligent manslaughter, negligent manslaughter, sex offenses, robbery, aggravated assaults, burglary, motor vehicle theft, and arsons. 
hate crimes, which is a continuation from the last slide. Hate crimes offenses include homicide, arson, motor vehicle theft, sex offenses. When is a crime reported? Crime is reported when it is brought to the attention of the CSA. If CSA receives the crime information directly, he or she should document, document it as a reported crime. In this instance, it is not the CSA's responsibility for the investigation, only reporting it. After a crime is reported, what should you do? You can contact the University Police Department at the number listed, or you can report it anonymously online, and you have the website there. And what should you tell them? Everything you know about the allegation. Does it matter where the crime occurred? Crimes must be reported only if it occurred on campus, public property within the immediate adjacent to campus, non-campus university controlled properties. Here's a recap. What the crime reported, was the crime reported to the campus security authority did the crime occur in a clearly reportable geographic area? Is the crime a clearly reportable criminal offense? Other things to remember, documentation is absolutely key. When the crime occurred, where did it happen? When was it reported to you? Should you be reporting it to the university police or anonymously? If you have further questions after this, you can contact me directly at the numbers listed below. My cell number is 252-314-9675. The office number 252-335-3691. And I'm located at 142 Thomas Jenkins Building, which is the University Police Building. And my email is wmorrisjr at ecsu.edu. Thank you.